and rolling. Hello there, uh, viewer and or listener. How are you doing? Uh, for those who are unaware of myself, which is probably a lot, uh, I'm Oscar W. Fitchett, and what you are currently witnessing is episode zero of a new podcast called And We're Rolling. Uh, I will be the host of said podcast. Now, um, think of this episode, episode zero, as an introduction to what this actually is going to be. Uh, for those also unaware and who may not have, who may not have seen the Instagram or Twitter posts regarding this whole scenario, this is what this video podcast is for: is to explain what is and we're rolling. Well, and we're rolling is, as I've said, a podcast hosted by me. Um, and the topic of this is anything. The whole premise of And We're Rolling is I want to be able to have an outlet to where I can just bring on anyone I want, whether it be a good friend of mine, maybe a family member, someone that's very new to me, or even just me myself, and just talk about anything and everything. I mean, literally anything, because um, in the past, um, as some might be aware, I uh, used to just talk about films. That was my main thing. Um, Heel Pictures was the thing that uh, I used to do quite a lot over the past many of years. And uh, that was a film platform for the most part, as well as like video game and TV, just general entertainment chit chat. Um, however, I also like discussing other things. And although I, I, although Heel Pictures has been put to an end, I kind of want to continue doing something where I can just have somewhere to just talk to people about anything. And I don't mean, oh, let's just chit-chat about our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, literally just any, like, just deep conversation. If, the, if, if it goes that way, the show could literally be, I can bring my friend Gary onto the show and we could just randomly start, and we can spend a whole episode talking about films. I don't know, or we could, or I can get uh, another friend of mine, or something like that, and we end up talking about existentialism. It's all that's exactly what this show is there to do. It's and it's meant to almost give you guys, the viewers, to be a fly on the wall almost in this scenario, and that brings it to the name of the show called And We're Rolling. And the reason for it being named And We're Rolling is because this whole thing is going to be uncut, unedited, unfiltered, whatever. It's going to be... The episode starts from the moment I hit record and the episode will end when I hit the stop button. So that is why it's called Amber Rolling. And you are hearing everything that's happening in this small section of me talking from when I've just hit record to whenever I hit not record, not record. That's what I mean. I'll leave things in like that for you all. It's to almost create just a raw, natural atmosphere and just because I personally feel that a lot of online stuff is very like you we need we're, we're trying to almost um hold up a mask of what we want to be or what we want people to see us be and I mean I've I'm like I've found myself doing this as well where I've tried to uh filter myself on certain things and try to make my life seem a lot more um exciting than actually is and I feel like I kind of want this show to be almost 
being proud of the little flaws and stuff and, you know, any conversations, any slip-ups, any awkwardness within an episode in that it will get captured because I, I, I do think we, we all are very... We're very much so... Um, we're, we're quite a... Ge- we're, uh, we're a people that we need to be pristine and perfect. We're quite perfectionist when it comes to us and especially when, you know, if we are recording ourselves in some way and we're listening or watching back to that, we're only focusing on that whole thing and we're trying to, like, nitpick things. Like, oh, that wasn't good. Ah, oh, I said that wrong. Ah, uh, let me edit that out. And again... If you uh, if you know me or if you are aware of me and if you have watched Heel Pictures, you'll know in film reviews I have edited a lot of things out. More so the if and more so like the ums and ahs I've edited out. And I, I even want to keep those in here because I don't know about anyone else uh, what this is here for. Because what me personally, personally me, personally myself. I love conversations. I love talking to people. Um, not the microphone there, sorry. Um, not sure if you even heard that, but I knocked the microphone. But I do think it's... I, I like talking to people. I Not even talking to people. I do like talking to people. I like getting to know people, even like through listening, like podcasts and stuff like that. I'm always drawn to the very, like raw natural side of things and i and i can't get and i can never quite get behind really like stylized stuff uh online content stuff i don't know it's just not my thing um i like content creating but i also want to stay true to myself and that's what again that's what this show is and it's a show that i'm not doing for anyone else other than really myself and other people that's not to say i don't that's not to say i want to alienate people but what i'm purely doing for this is i want to do a show that allows me to be able to speak certain things and it might be interesting to people i want to have a crack at this podcast game myself uh not to try get mega successful at it but just to have a go get some experience and i want people that i think are quite interesting uh in my general friendship groups or whatever to also be involved in that and hopefully there's an audience out there if there isn't oh well whatever and if you are watching this slash listening to this thinking to yourself this sounds like my cup of tea then come along come and watch it and also this will be the one of the only times if not the only time that in the show i will be addressing you the viewer uh because again the whole purpose and point of the show is to more so be um very much so a fly on the wall in a conversation so for the most part it would just be i'll set up the camera get the mics ready hit record whoever i'm with We'll just start talking, and then that will be it. It won't be anything like, hey, you guys, how are you doing? What are you thinking about? I'm only doing it now because that's what this is for. I'm here to explain to you guys what this show is. But, um, and, yeah, I and that's basically what it's going to be. It's going to be a fly-on-the-wall type of thing featuring a conversation with me and whoever else. I don't know. Um, Friends family i don't know i might get some big names on here i won't well my kid who am i kidding when i'm saying that anyway that's what i mean awkwardness i i I'm, there's little bits of awkwardness in this and it's moments like that that i want to capture i want it i want this to be almost just a a snippet of time cut out and then on display and yeah, I just want to see like where that goes, and one. But one thing I will also preface as well: uh, where will this be? Of course, it will be through uh, the YouTube channel. That if you're watching this video, if you're watching a video of me, you you're watching this through the YouTube channel. That's where this is going to be. However, at the moment, I'm also going to try to um, 
this might fail miserably, which is why I'm not going to say it right now. But I'm trying to get this on as an audio related thing on a podcast site. I'll see. I'll see. Keep you up to date with that. And by keep you up to date with that, how are you going to keep up to date with this? Well, with And We're Rolling, if you go to, again, in the YouTube channel, there will be links in the description below um, for where you can keep up with all of this stuff. Um, uh, the Time R Media website um, will have is the home to all of that. That's where you can see stuff. That's where you can see and we're rolling and more information on and we're rolling you can see information about this show um and also on the time r media uh, instagram account is where updates will also be posted involving and we're rolling um but yeah that's what's gonna happen with that again links will be in the description below but uh timer uh, timermedia.wixsite.com slash home is where you can find the uh, is the website side of things. Or if you want to go on Instagram at timermedia, timer spelt T Y M A R, and then media on Instagram. That's timermedia spelt T Y M A R media on Instagram. And that's where updates will of this show will be posted and all that stuff. But I'm also trying to promote um, getting off social media a bit so that, you know, it's a bit of a... It's an interesting balance, this whole thing. Um, Also, I want to also say this is episode zero just to get something out there. However, I will say now... Episode one will probably be quite a while. And that's another thing. This show's not going to abide to a schedule. It's going to be whenever it happens. That's what this, again, that's what this show is. This show's going to be very spontaneous, no real schedule, just whenever it happens, an episode will happen. And if it doesn't happen for months, then it won't happen for months. There can be an episode, there can be two episodes done within a week, maybe. There might be an episode done within two months. Who knows? And it's probably going to be, at the moment, it's probably going to be more of a situation where it's going to be um, a little while since the next episode due to the current situation, uh, which is somewhere I, I've, I'm kind of done talking about the actual show itself. Now I'm just going to add a little bit extra to this uh, to this episode right now episode zero within the current climate that we're in the world is quite uh it's a very it's an interesting time it's a confusing time and to some it's quite a scary time and uh, it's a frustrating time for me uh to some extent but also um what i want to talk about with this as well we i want the first episode to be not just me. I wanted it to be myself and someone else. So, with that being said, it'll be a while until, um, as far as we're aware, it will be a while until episode one is actually out there for you to view slash listen to. Because, again, I don't want... Personally, I just don't want the first episode to just be me. Because that's all it will be for the first few episodes is just me. Because who else am I going to... Uh, get on uh, an episode of Anger Rolling. So just keep that in mind that episode one will be a late episode uh, due to this whole uh, pandemic that's happening right now. And speaking of said pandemic, I want to just address a little something um, because I think think it's an important thing. Uh, I tweeted about this because... I mean, and I don't tweet regularly, so I only tweet when I feel something's important. And I'm not here to talk about um, the medical or the political side of things involving uh, COVID-19, because that's not what you 
come to me for? I'm not a political or medical person. I don't have the knowledge. I'm not qualified to talk about that at all. So I'm not going to share my opinions on all that stuff because I personally don't really have many political or medical opinions about the matter. What I can talk about um, and what I do feel a bit more qualified to talk about is cinema, is film, specifically cinema, specifically cinemas. Um, at the moment, cinema, every cinema is temporarily closes doors right now. Um, until further notice. And I'm a big, big, big advocate for going to the cinema. I mean, I love Netflix, you know, the fact that I could just sit and watch Marriage Story and The Irishman in my home is amazing. Um... And there's certain, and I, I love that stuff, but I'm always a massive, 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 massive um, advocate for going out to the cinema. That's just how you, it's the best way to experience a film. There's, I, it, there's no other way to pr purely experience a film. I honestly do think that if you watch a film that you think, like, at home, that you think it's good, whatever, chances are it's going to be better if you saw it in the cinema. No matter what the film, it's just going to be better. I don't even mean a big blockbuster sci-fi epic thing. I mean, even just like, I mean, I, every December I watch It's a Wonderful Life every year and that's all, it's just better on the big screen. And speaking of such, I do, at the moment, obviously the big chains have shut, have shut, uh, like View, Empire, Odeon, Cineworld, World, all those in the UK have shut for now. What I'm concerned about within this whole matter is um, the independent cinemas. And the main one, and specifically for me, the one that I have, that I can talk mostly about is Tyneside Cinema, uh, which is located in Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Um, any cinephile has an indie cinema that they back and they're passionate about. Mine's the Tyneside Cinema, which is why I'm specifically talking about Tyneside Cinema. At the moment, like everything else, they have temporarily closed down. The scary thing about this is that they're in a position where they might not be able to reopen after all this. And I'll get all this out the way with, and I'll talk about some of my memories of Tyneside and why Tyneside means so much to me. Tyneside is my favorite cinema uh, about, again, if you're a cinephile, you have that as well. You have a cinema that you freaking love so much. And yeah, and to me, it's Tyneside. And I'm not tell. There's no like promotional gain I'm getting from this. It's just what I, it's something that I'm passionate about. Something that I have a strong opinion about. That's why I'm talking about it now. They've currently got a thing on their website uh, to where you can donate to them and help them help keep them going. Um, because, yeah, as I said, they're in a danger where they might not be able to reopen. They're, I'll leave a link in the description. It will be the first link in the description on the YouTube video to, um, if you want to, go and donate. I'll also link a state uh, their statement that they've put out as well. So the links down below will take you to their official statement and... Um, a donate and a donation link if you so want to do so if you want to do so uh, again i'm not saying you have to do it i'm not threatening anyone i'm just trying to get that message out there more so now why does tyneside mean so much to me why is it my favorite cinema um apart from the fact it's just got an incredible aesthetic it's just got it, it it's got it just looks cool. It just it's it's a cool venue. You go in, and it has four different screens. I think. Let me think. Classic Electra Roxy Gallery. I think that's it. 
again, cool names. They're not just screen one, screen two, screen... They're classic... Elect the classic theatre is the best one. The classic screen is like you go in. It's like an old school theatre. There's curtains that part where the screen is. It's got balconies. It's it's beautiful. It's wonderful. They Obviously, they show all these really cool independent films, as well as they show some classic stuff as well. Um, they have fun events on, they, they put on events as well. Um, they do specialized screenings as well. They do autistic friendly screenings. They do dementia friendly screenings, which I went to a dementia friendly screening for the Hitchcock film Notorious, which is the first time I saw the film Notorious. And it's just a nice casual time. Uh, you know, it's, it's not dementia. No, it is dementia friendly. It is dementia friendly where the lights aren't as the lights are dimmed, they're not darkened, not turned off. The volume isn't as loud as it would be. It gives you freedom to just kind of mosey on about. Um, and they have uh, and they have a cup of tea. They have like a tea station as well. It, it was wonderful. I loved seeing that. And it's it's like the old, old good old good like good old school films that get shown in the dementia friendly screenings in time side it's wonderful i love it so much um but also there as well it has uh a bar a bar slash restaurant bar cafe type thing which is it's really it's really cool as well it's a really cool place as well as a coffee cafe a coffee shop as well like next door to it that uh, Vicolo, Vicolo Cafe, great stuff as well. It's just a the community feeling there is wonderful. It's just ah, uh, it's some of that like it's my favorite place to go. It genuinely is. I love going on the train in Newcastle, getting off the train, heading up, heading up to Gray's Monument because it's near Gray's Monument, then going to uh, Tyneside. And getting a ticket and just sitting down and watching just a film that I wouldn't be able to watch just at my view. That's another thing. The, the amount, like the amount of films that I've been able to watch because of in the cinema because of Tyneside, it's incredible. I the my first experience with Tyneside was back in the summer of 2012, and I remember I wanted to see Moonrise Kingdom so badly. Uh, I was hearing loads of hype about it. I remember seeing the trailers. This was... I, I was a young cinephile. I was still just getting into being a really big film fan. And I really want to see Moonrise Kingdom. Um, it wasn't my first Wes Anderson. My first Wes Anderson being Fantastic Mr. Fox. But Moonrise Kingdom would have been my second. Uh, it was my first film when I knew who Wes Anderson was. And nowhere was shown it. My local view, local view cinema wasn't shown it. Showcase Cinema in Teesside Park wasn't shown it. The Odeon in the Metro Center wasn't shown it. Where else can I go and see this film? And I saw this, uh, oh, a place called Tyneside Cinema. Tyneside, isn't that Newcastle? Yes, it is. I remember going there. And just sitting in the, uh, no, the Roxy. It was the Roxy cinema and sitting and watching moonrise kingdom and just loving it and then from then on it just kind of snowballed i remember watching 12 years a slave in the what was it it was the classic in the classic cinema seeing 12 years a slave in the classic cinema and just other films that like i just the atmosphere at times i'd really improved the viewing experience i have a warm feeling when i think about carol and Trumbo, two films that I'm not necessarily in love with. However, I remember just going to see them in Tyneside and I just have like a nice warmth about it because the films are quite, you know, they're nice and cozy films almost. And the cinema just really enhanced that for me. I managed to see films. I managed to see, a, I got to see A Clockwork Orange in the cinema because of Tyneside, which is a which was a belt a beautiful belt of an experience. Um, since uh, since December twenty sixteen, uh, every Christmas time they show "It's a Wonderful Life," 
in the cinema. And since every December since 2016, I've went and see, I went to go and see It's a Wonderful Life in the cinema. And it's a magical experience every time. I love that film so much. Seeing it in the cinema, it's just, I, it, all, it never fails to make me just tear up. And there's always an atmosphere when it ends without fail. Everyone just around me just start applauding when the end title card comes up. Ah, it's just wonderful. I love it so much. And yeah, like that's great. I love that. I, I, I've had days where I've, I've had a weekend where I've just, where went to see a film, went, I maybe saw three films each day. Fantastic. And it's just, the cinema is just, it's a, it's a place for just film fans to be. And an example would is this. I remember seeing the Luca Guadagnino Suspiria uh, in the cinema. And, you know, it wasn't a packed cinema. This one was the, the Roxy again, I believe. Um, and I remember just people just... There were people there. And when the film ended, it was just people like, oh, yeah, that was really good. Oh, yeah might be my favorite film of the year that uh, you know just just chit chat about the film but exciting chit chat and it's it was great because i know fine well if i just saw that film if i saw suspiria in any other cinema any other just random cinema i it would for the most part i all i would have been hearing from people would have been like oh what the fuck was that i was weird whereas like I don't know, there's just, you don't just get randos walking into Tyneside. It's always just enthusiastic film fans. And again, that, I mean, I'm a big A24 fan. That's no secret. I mean, I'm wearing Black Phillip. I'm I'm wearing a, a shirt of The Witch right now. I'm a huge, huge A24 fan. And... If it wasn't for Tyneside, I probably wouldn't have seen many A24 films in the cinema. Um, I saw Midsummer. Uh, I mean, there's a few A24 films that I managed to see not in Tyneside, but there's a lot. Like The Lighthouse, recently. Light, the, I love The Lighthouse so much. Um, if you are about a self-isolation film, that's a hell of a film to be uh, self-isolating with, by the way. Um but I I need, like, that's a film to see on the big screen. And I wouldn't have got to see it if it wasn't for Tyneside Cinema. And it's the la it's home to, I mean, I managed to see uh, my first foreign film in the cinema. Not my first foreign film, but my first foreign film experience in a cinema was in Tyneside. It's the only foreign films that I've seen have been in Tyneside Cinema. Um, my, my my first foreign film cinema experience was Shoplifters, the Corietta film from a few years ago. A really good, a really good film. This, like, again, I wouldn't have seen it if it wasn't for Tyneside. Does The Farewell count as a foreign film? I don't really count it as a foreign film. But if you do, I also saw that in Tyneside as well. And... Also, another foreign film that I saw in Tyneside Cinema, Parasite, which was my last Tyneside experience, which was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful experience. I I just remember, uh, it was myself and Gary, we went to Tyneside Cinema, it was packed, it was the classic, it was the classic screen, packed, and everyone was invested, it was the day before the Oscars as well. Everyone was invested. You you can just because in the that was the day when we could have got it in the UK. Uh, it came out eighth, the eighth, seventh, seventh of February. It came out a few like two days before the Oscars, and I remember, and of course, film fans hearing all of this hype for Parasite, just waiting for it and. In the UK, we finally got it, and you could just feel it around us that, like, everyone in the cinema was exactly like me in the sense, like, just highly anticipating this film because I've been hearing nothing but great things about it, and we're finally getting to see this film, and everyone was just 
loving it. You could tell, like, it it just, you could feel it in the air. And, God, that was, like, just such an electric experience in there. But, and that's not even my favourite cinema experience. That's not even my favourite cinema experience. My favourite cinema experience is home in Tyne. Tyneside Cinema is home to my favourite cinema experience ever. Um... Uh, it's when, um, it was when, and it wasn't even just because it was one film, it was a multi, it was three films technically, it was, um, I mean a few, right, in 2017, late 2017, Tyneside Cinema finally showed The Room, uh, in terms of, they did a back, they did a double bill of The, of The Disaster Artist and The Room, and that was a magical experience. That was wonderful. However, that's not my favorite cinema experience of all time. My favorite cinema experience was April 10th, 2019. So it's coming to the year anniversary of my favorite cinema experience ever. Tides, Tyneside put on an event where they were going to show both Best Friends films, Best Friends Volume 1 and Volume 2, back to back, and then also the room after that and Greg Sestero was there and that was an experience I got to meet Greg Sestero because of I got to meet Greg Sestero I got a, an autograph that I, got, I bought the best friends blu-ray he signed it just a really class act and seeing best friends on the big screen again with people around me and Gary as well Gary's a person. I don't know why I had to like do that with it. But again, it was a packed screening of best friends. And there was a QA with Greg Sestero as well, but just everyone just watching that bizarre of an experience that that film, that both of the best friends volume one and volume two are. That's just. And then on top of that, seeing the room with it with a packed cin a packed cinema throwing spoons chanting along it's it was just god it was it, it's it's probably my favorite day it's one of my favorite days i'm not sure if it's my favorite day of all time but it's one of my favorite days of all time is that day and god whenever i just think about Tyneside cinema and all the experiences that i've had there and the thought of going there and stuff it's just it's the thing that really keeps me like i just I, I'm just, uh, I'm just, it's, it's happiness. It's my favorite place is Tyneside Cinema. I mean, there was a time when I saw, what did I see? Oh, this was a day. I remember I went to see, uh, I saw Old Man and the Gun. Sorry to bother you. And the house that Jack built all in one day. Would I mean right? Think about this. Go and see the house that Jack built, and then after that, seeing "Sorry to Bother You." What a mental experience that was! And I loved every minute of it. I loved every single moment of that. And again, it was only because of Tyneside. I was only able to have that experience because of Tyneside Cinema. So yeah, yeah, God, yeah. So that that. Yeah, definitely. I can't think of anything anything more heartbreaking. I'm touch wood. I'm saying that now. That's a very dangerous thing to say. But God, I would be so heartbroken if that were to close down. But that is genuinely my favorite. I mean, yeah, I love it so much. I love it so much. There's so many more moments I could think and talk about with that cinema. Uh, but yeah. That's why I'm going to leave the links in the description below, the donation links. Um, and also, I encourage everyone else, if you have... I'm not even just talking about a cinema, just anything, that you, any place or uh, anything like that, any, any place, any... You know, whether or not necessarily a cinema, whether it might be like your favourite cafe that you're at your favorite independent little cafe that you love to go to, that's probably also in danger. I encourage people to use 
their social media for stuff like that, especially in this time. We get it. You love spreading the memes. I get it. Okay? Having all these isolation memes and, oh, it's lockdown. Oh, it's quarantine. Oh, all these memes. I get it. It's funny. Whatever. Just tell you what. Think about what could be heavily affected. Think about something that you really love, really like that could be heavily affected from um, this pandemic. And just use your platform, whether if it be YouTube or your Instagram or your Twitter or your Facebook, just think about something and then, sorry, hit the microphone again, and then just make that something you spread and promote. And that's what I'm going to say there. And again, um, don't expect episode one anytime soon because of all this, but... That's what I'm going to leave you with, just... um, If you want to, if you can, support Tyneside Cinema. If you have something else you want more people to support, spread that as well. Use your social media for something more than just a, a daft meme. Okay, especially in this time. I mean, I'm not saying, like, don't have memes because, you know, whatever. Everything makes people a lot, you know. People need escapism. And, you know, if that's your form of escapism, go for it. Certainly not mine, but that's just me. Anyway, that's been that. That's been episode zero of And We're Rolling. I say episode zero. It's been an introduction to the concept of this. And a little bit of uh, Tyneside support rally. uh, Because I really want... uh, I really like to support Tyneside. But yes, there you go. That's basically what Andra Rowland's going to be. uh, Except there's going to be someone else as well. It's not just going to be me all the time. It would be me very... It would be just me very rarely. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, yeah. And cheers. And I'm going to stop recording the camera. Still recording the audio. And a little bit of extra for the podcast listeners right now. (laughs) And the video viewers. I'm going to stop recording now. Thanks everyone for listening.